So I've been asked to do a video on polymer clay bales. Boy, that's a big subject. Um, and I won't be able to cover all of it today. But I'm going to talk about some of my favorite types of bales. Um, I like doing bales that sit on top of uh, a piece. They uh, sit very nicely on your neck then. Uh, there's no tipping involved. So um, I want to discuss that. Uh, I've got some different examples here. This one has some copper tubing. I'll show you how I do that. Um, this is a separate kind of bale that you might want to use when you have a, a pendant or a, a bead with a hole or something like that. And it's just simply a circle of clay that's been folded over. Uh, same with this one. We'll do one of these. I, I really like this type of bale. This one is uh, a piece of clay that I've rolled almost into a tube and I put it over top of uh, a baked piece. And then um, with a little bacon bond or uh, poly paste, some kind of liquid uh, clay, and uh, rebake the piece. Uh, that's a, a nice, nice bale. I really like using those. Uh, this is one of my most favorite necklaces. I wear this one all the time, all the time. So it's got a little copper tube with a uh, polymer clay over top of it. And uh, that's what the back looks like. So the, the band of polymer clay goes onto the pre-baked pendant. And then I covered it with a piece of raw clay that's been textured. So very, very secure. So some other other ones here. Uh, this is again uh, a, a tube that's sort of been uh, fitted over top of um, the piece of uh, polymer and uh, on the on the bottom and again used bacon bond on it to make sure that it's good and secure. Once that's baked it's pretty strong. Same with this. Uh, it's a, a band of of clay that um, uh, went from the back. In this case, I, text I put a textured raw layer on the back first, and then the band of clay that had a, s a shorter strip over top of it. And right across the very front, it actually covers, let's see if you can see that, uh, covers a little bit of the pendant, um, secure it again with uh, bacon bond or TLS, and uh, gives me an opportunity to dress it up with crystals or brads or that type of thing. Um, let's see, we've got, like I say, it's a big subject. I've done all kinds of different types of bales. Um, th this one, I didn't want to bale on top. So it's been, it was a curved piece that I did. I uh, filled it a little bit with raw clay and then just took a, a strip of clay and um, made a little arch which becomes almost like a tube and secured it so it again now it's a uh, raw to raw situation so you're going to have a good bond and just use a dotting tool to sort of uh, press it down to secure it so that's that one's not too bad it tips forward a little bit um, that's kind of the problem with putting bales on the back unless you have a, a really high curve um, they can they can tip forward so let's let's talk about that. So I've got I've got some uh, this is ex extruded clay. Um, let's see here. So I don't know if you've used this Macon's clay core adapter. Uh, it comes in two sets. From uh, one set goes from one millimeter, two millimeter, and three millimeter, and the second set goes from uh, uh, let's see, the, the biggest one is four and a half millimeters, and then there's a four millimeter and a three and a half millimeter. So, uh, I really like these. They're, they're fun to do. So you basically, what you do is, um, take a well-conditioned clay, and, uh, I just got some scrap here just to show you. And you put it in your extruder. This is probably too too much clay so I'll we'll just top it down back a little bit
that's a little tiny screw to this one, but I figured it'd be good to demonstrate rather than take out the big one. So then you take your clay core adapter. I'm going to use the largest one, the four and a half millimeter one. So it goes on top of the clay. Clay goes in first. It goes on top of the clay and then the cover goes over top of that. So you're going to have your point on the outside. Almost forgot you need to die with a, with a, um, a hole. Uh, you could do them in the square shape. I'm going to do it in a circle shape. So that goes on top of the... Uh, So that goes on top of the uh, clay core adapter and then your cover goes over top of all of that. And then you extrude it. So I should have this clamped. It's really hard to do if it's not clamped. But anyways, there's enough here so that you could see. So I'll just cut that off. And what it gives you is a nice tube with a hole in it. So that, that uh, can be used as a bale. So let's go back to this. So the, here's one I extruded from before. And let's say you, uh, you have a large pendant and uh, you want to put a, a bale and this is a flat pendant it's not not curved so you put a tube in behind well what happens it tips forward when it's on the body it doesn't look very nice um, I put uh, let's see here put a little piece of double-sided carpet tape so that I can show you what it looks like Hard to, t to show you how it's going to hang from this cam camera angle, but it's going to it's going to be it's tipped forward. So I don't know if you can see that. You probably can. So it's tipped forward, anyways. It's not very attractive. So pieces like this, you're far better off to do something sitting on top. So I've taken one of these that I've extruded just with scrap clay and I covered it with a nice clay. So I would sit that on top and then use another strip to go over top of this and um, secure it with um, TLS or Bacon Bond. And that could be quite a nice, um, a nice pendant. So I'm not going to do that with that one. That was just for demonstration purposes. So one of my favorite things to use to make bales with is uh, refrigerator popper. So you buy that at a hardware store like uh, Lowe's or um, Home Depot and uh, this is the quarter inch size. It's going to make lots of noise and I bought a little mini pipe cutter. And I leave it on the roll and I just kind of decide, I'm going to open this up here, just kind of decide about how long I want my bale to be. And you, you tighten it, let's see, tighten it until it's just snug, not too tight. And then you turn it and you're going to have to tighten it after every turn. And you don't want it over tight, you will, you'll have a hard time turning it, but not tight enough, it won't cut. So you, you get the feel of it after you've done it for a while. And there's your little piece of copper that you can use for a bale. So then take a round file and just file the inside 
and uh, if you had a flat file you can file the outside so because you don't want this to cut your stringing material but these make nice bales and if you get any scratches on it you can take some fairly strong sandpaper and uh, and just rough up the finish and you get like a brush finish which looks really nice and they'll darken in time that's what copper does I like that look so anyways that's that's one thing I like to do So what happens if you don't have the Macon's Core adapter set and you don't have any uh, copper uh, to make uh, tubes? So you can make your own out of a ball of clay. So I've got a, a black clay here that's been well conditioned and I'm going to pierce it with a barbecue skewer. And just roll it out. Just go slow and apply even pressure. Uh, rolling it is going to make your hole bigger. So you might want to stretch it a wee bit too. And control the size of the hole so it doesn't get too sloppy. So I'm just applying a little pressure to push that clay back up against the uh, stick. And just even it out a bit. Then I can trim it right on the, uh, on the skewer. And slide it off. And then I like to use something like a, this is just a scrap of leather that kind of has a curve to it already. And that can help me shape it more into a curve. So let's put this on a pendant then. So this pendant that I've worked on here is raw clay it hasn't been baked you could do it baked but you'll get a bit of bond if it's if it's raw and then I prepared a strip of black clay that um, has a little bit of this Makumigani uh, um, veneer on it so I think that'll make a, a nice pendant so I'm going to put a little bacon bond and I'll just put it on the edge of the uh, edge of the pendant. Just smear it a little bit. Figure out where I want my bale to be. I'd put um, TLS on the back of this if it was cooked uh, or cured clay but this is raw clay so I'm not going to do that so I'm just going to lay this strip over top here kind of figure out exactly where I want it to go Let's swing it around to the back now I can see it's going to be too long so I'll just take a little piece of it off and we'll go back and put it on here. Now, ideally, I would have done that on a piece of cardstock, and then I could just go ahead and bake that like that but we're, I'm going to transfer it over okay I'm going to dress it up with a little crystal so I'm just going to take a little tiny piece of 
black clay. got those little things that help you pick up uh, crystals and stuff they don't work very good so what I usually do is put a tiny bit of clay on the tip of uh, my tool that I want and then that's going to pick that up just perfectly so I'll set that down and press it in so then that's ready to be baked Now this back part here, I could uh, use a dotting tool and uh, attach it a little bit better if it was already baked. Now I'm going to use this opportunity to uh, put my stamp on. So just slightly moisten it. So then that'll get baked. So that's that's one type to do. So that's ready. Okay, so another type that I like to do is um, like the, let's see, this one that I showed you. And uh, I usually do these on a piece that's already been baked and sometimes one that's uh, curved. Um, doesn't matter. Could be It could be straight as well. So that's really quite simple to do. So I prepared um, some clay. This is just white with um, Primo granite in it, probably a three to one ratio. And uh, I've done it on the second thickest setting of my uh, pasta maker. And uh, the reason why I've done it on the second thickest is because I want to cut some little lines into it which will be painted after it's baked and then sand it off. I just really like that look. You could do a stamped uh, version. You could, um, you know, it, it, anything will work. It's quite a simple thing to do. So I'm just going to lightly scratch into the surface. So the, the idea, you don't need to cut through very much. The paint will go into these little fine lines. Um, if, you, if you cut it too deep, then when you fold it over, it's going to open up too much and you won't like that look. So just going to scratch in a few random lines, different directions. And I've got a, a cutter here that's probably an inch and a quarter or so maybe an inch and a half. So I'm just going to cut a section off. The size that you choose is the size that's, uh, that you're, is going to be appropriate for your pendant. So uh, it, it may be, um, you know, a small pendant will require a smaller one. A large pendant might require a larger one. The one I'm going to work on today is uh, is this one, and I've tried a, a few other configurations, and I found this one works the best. So this has already been baked. Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to cover the back with uh, the same clay. So I'm going to take a second and do that. So I put a little bit of uh, TLS on the back of this pendant. And I've taken uh, the rest of that granite clay, ran it through the pasta maker. It's uh, on a number four. And my last pass, I actually ran it through on a three with this green foam 
Uh, I bought this quite some time ago. They sell it for lining your crispers in uh, drawers in your fridge. Uh, it's supposed to reduce the uh, likelihood of getting mold and mildew. So, but it makes a wonderful texture. It's very, very fine texture. So I'm just going to lay that over top of, of my pendant. Make sure I don't get any air in it. And just cut around. Now I don't really, didn't really have to do this. If this pendant was thicker, it, it wouldn't have mattered so much. Uh, it's pretty thin, so I'm going to do that. And you'll get a better bond if you're bonding raw clay to raw clay. So if I had chosen not to do that, I would just use more TLS on it. Now I'm just going to cut this on a bit of an angle. Because I don't really want to see the white from the front. good. So I've got my pendant here. I'm going to fold it over, put a little bit of bacon bond on it. That just helps you so that you don't have to press down quite so hard. So you'll, you'll be sure you've got a good bond. So I'm going to de de determine where I want it to go. This type of bale, I know I want to leave it fairly wide because I'll probably use this, uh, use some sorry ribbon or different cords on that. Uh, you can sort of give that a little bit more of a flare. And then I usually like to put a crystal or something there. So I'll check through my crystals. So I've got a crystal here that I can put on here that I think will work nicely. And just kind of center it. And then press it down. And then that can join the other one for the for the oven. If you don't have the curve the way you want it, you can take that uh, a curved piece of rubber or this is leather, and uh, you can really help make that curve a little bit more pronounced. It just depends on the look that you're looking for. So that's ready for the oven too. Okay, just a couple more things. Uh, like I say, this is, uh, it's a huge subject and I don't have time to cover all of it. Um, another type of bale I like to use is, uh, um, I, I might go through my tubes that I've made from previous projects I tend to save ones that I haven't used. So this was just a, an oval of clay that had the pan pastels done on it and alcohol ink over top and then I covered it with liquid clay. So something like that could make quite a nice bale. Um, so I would attach it with uh, again with TLS on there and um, you know, find, find an area that I thought it would look nice on. Something, something like that. And I may or may not put another layer over top to sort of um, uh, connect it better. 
uh, that works really, really well. That's, you know, basically, you know, what I've done here. So this part becomes your connection. Um, this is another tube that I had done quite some time ago. I'd used in another project, and I always make extra, so I had this one. So on, on this one, it's not quite assembled yet. I uh, drilled into it and um, used uh, rubber boona cord and little o-rings and so I glued those on and then I drilled corresponding holes in the uh, pendant. This pendant was really hard to drill because it's sloped. It, you're way better off to, if you had a flat edge that would be a lot easier. But anyways, um, and then I would take some, some uh, um, super glue and glue that down and uh, make sure that the roll wings were uh, well attached and then that would uh, you know you could put your cording through that what's kind of nice about this is if uh, your pendant is kind of crooked you can you can lift one end and uh, bring your o-rings down and then you'd have a level bale the pendant can hang whichever way it wants to hang that you think it, it looks best at and um, so that works pretty good. It's not easy to do. Don't do that a lot, but uh, that's a, just another way of doing it. And uh, the other types of bales um, that work for, uh, for hanging pendants off of yeah, okay, like this. They're just, they're super simple to make. So you just take your, your clay and decide on a shape. Doesn't matter what shape. Squares work, ovals work, circles work, and you're basically just folding it and uh, put a hole in it. Now match your match your ends a little bit nicer than that, but. And then you're going to attach a jump ring to that, and then the jump ring to your pendant, whatever you're going to do. And uh, you can hang your pendants from that. Uh, on this one, I chose to hang three jump, uh, jump rings off of it, just because it, it gives me more of a visual balance. And um, they're fun and easy to do too, so I do quite a few of them. Anyways, like I say, it's a big subject. I can't cover all of it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye.